Good afternoon. I am honored to welcome you as the superintendent of the Mount Pleasant Blythdale Union Free School District. I am Dr. Emily Hirsch, and today we are celebrating 50 years of educating children while their bodies healed. And I am honored to share with you our story. Today, you will hear from various people who have either been impacted or impacted our program, a program that began with a vision, a vision of one man, Mr. Bob Stone. Bob knew that in order to truly make a difference in the lives of children who have had life altering events, we needed to ensure that we not only nurtured their bodies, but their hearts, their minds, and their souls. What does every child in the USA do? Yes, you're right, they go to school. Therefore, as a result of Bob's vision, the Mount Pleasant Blythdale Special Act Union Free School District was approved as a New York State public school by a majority vote of the New York State legislation delegation in 1971. If you didn't have a symbiotic relationship between the world of education and medicine, you really could not accomplish for a child with multiple problems the things that they needed. Central to everything that we talked about was this concept of a unified approach to the needs of a child, giving everything we could both in medicine and education to try and move this child from being dependent to a greater degree of independence. I have no interest in creating just an ordinary school district. If we can't do an exemplary job, a job that will be a model, then I don't want to do it. One of the many unique things about Blythdale is we actually have our own on-site school district. The Mount Pleasant Blythdale School District is a K-12 school where the children that go here are in some way a patient at Blythdale. Our inpatients have the ability to come here for school, but we have about 120 kids who come in from home every day bust in by their local school district. The idea is that they have some sort of extensive medical rehabilitative needs that are too difficult to meet in the community, and so they can come here, go to school, while also receiving the therapies. But for our inpatients, what's really amazing about it is it's a great way for children to continue the really important socialization and development, as well as education that's really necessary for children to thrive. public school provides learning opportunities that are parallel to all other New York State public schools. What's unique to our program is our mission, educating students while their bodies heal. We are always seeking ways to improve upon our program. Alumni provide us with that insight on how we can make those changes to our program to make improvements. Let's hear from our alumni. I had a traumatic brain injury from an AVM that ruptured in my head five days before for the procedure. So I had to relearn basically everything over again, and that was a big help. I was able actually to return to sports. Um, I wrestled in high school, and I've actually you know, played rugby in college up in New York. My legs and arms were weak to the point that I had to be in a chair, and I had to relearn how to do like everyday things, like walking, tying my shoe. Once I got here, I felt like I was somewhere that I needed to be because I really love everyone here. I maintained wonderful grades that I had. The teachers always made sure that my grades were on top. Going through therapy and everything else, it was really good. It taught me to have faith in myself that I could like get past it. And also, everybody here is inspiring. I feel like I have a purpose now that I went here and I got to leave on my own two feet. I passed my math regents here. This school transformed me, levitated me to um, a better place. When I got here, I was completely like, you know, flaccid basically in my right side. Couldn't talk. After a year and a half, 
I recovered. I, I went on a biking trip across Vermont. I actually uh, triked it, trying my hand in art. Diagnosed with cerebral palsy at birth, Whitetail really has made me the man that I am right now. I thought I was the only person going through something. But then when I came here, I was like, oh shoot, people are like me. Every single person was like a second family to me. To go from being in a hospital bed, entirely paralyzed on my left side, 100% dependent on a ventilator, to where I am now, is, is it gives you a whole new outlook on life and it really is a wonderful thing. I had a traumatic brain injury, I was in a coma, and every step of the way, the, the school at Blakedale, they really supported me. I'm officially a college student in Burton Community College. My major is special education. I want to do what Blakedale did for me, for other children. I received my bachelor's in business administration with a focus in hospitality, hopefully to be a physical therapist one day. I'm in college. I recently came from studying abroad, studying speech pathology. I want to give back. I'm studying music and exercise science because I want to be a music therapist. I mean, that's a big portion to do with Blightail. I started up a car wash business upstate and it's pretty successful. I'm in City College now. Uh, my plan is to become an early childhood teacher. I want to write children's books for kids with disabilities to educate about disabilities and give representation. I got accepted into the National Honor Society. I remember running for valedictorian. Right now I'm going to Lehman College studying education. Definitely um, Blake Dell had a part in my decision. So I was able to return to my high school and um, graduate with all my regents and everything. I love the like, kids in hospitals. I want to make people feel the way that I felt when I was there. I'm planning to be a physical therapist. I'm still in the Bronx. I'm in college now, studying social work. Smile, because we don't own the world's problems. When you leave Blythdale, chase whatever, whatever you want, you could achieve it and don't let anyone tell you it's impossible. If you don't have faith in yourself, you will never never accomplish something that you want to accomplish. If you're going through a challenge right now, doesn't yeah. matter what it is, if it's genetic or something recently happened, it will get better. You're going to get better and you're going to do amazing things and just remember that. You know, keep pushing, keep going forward, don't stop, don't look back. There's only one destination and that's forward. Thank you all. Nice job, MPV. So now I'm delighted to introduce Scott Levy. Scott is the chair of the board of trustees of Blytheville Children's Hospital and the executive director of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. His passion for and dedication to children's health and education make him an invaluable leader and partner in the care of our medically fragile children. We are thrilled that Scott is here with us this morning. Thank you, Emily. And that video was really inspiring. It was so much fun to see all the alumni speak so passionately about their experience. Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of the board of Blythdale Children's Hospital, I wanna welcome you to this celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Mount Pleasant Blythdale School. I wanted to talk about a study I read very recently um, that came out of the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, and it was exploring the impact of teamwork on healthcare delivery. And what it concluded is that strong team orientation in hospitals led to safer care delivery, a better patient experience, and superior clinical outcomes. And there's no doubt about it that here at Lifedale Children's Hospital, we take teamwork very seriously. And we know that to make a positive difference in the lives of our patients, it takes coming together, nurses, doctors, therapists, janitors, Staff, food service staff, with the goal of delivering the best care to our medically fragile children. But today we're here to celebrate teamwork on a totally different level, even more unique, which is a partnership between two entities, 
Blythedale Children's Hospital and the Mount Pleasant Blythedale School. Blythedale is the only hospital in New York State with its own public school district on site. And across the hospital and the school, whether it's in the boardrooms of both entities or the classrooms or Therapy Village, everyone does truly work together as a team to focus holistically on the needs of our patients. And we know that in addition to medical care, this includes social, emotional, and intellectual learning support. They're all inextricably linked. The value of a high quality education that has been delivered at Mount Pleasant Blythedale School has made such a positive difference in the lives of so many children. Social scientists over time have demonstrated the correlation between education and healthier behavior, longer life expectancy, higher wages, but the most awe-inspiring thing about education at the end of the day is it provides children with a mechanism to follow and achieve their hopes and their dreams. And I stand here today really inspired about the last 50 years of enabling um, lots of patients and students who have come through the school to unleash their hopes and dreams and make those possible. And I think about the next 50 years and how exciting it is to think we can all work together continue to work together to help kids achieve their hopes and dreams. And I humbly thank all of you on this webinar today. Um, Bob Stone and those who came before us need to be thanked as well as all of our current administrative leaders, volunteers, staff members, your teachers, donors, and our partners in government, many of whom are on this call. You've all possible to reach this milestone and we look forward to a really bright future. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. That was a wonderful tribute to the collaboration that has taken place for 50 years. And yes, we do look forward to 50 more years, at least. So Owen, good friend. He has been on the Mount Pleasant Blythedale School Board for 25 years and on the Blythedale Children's Hospital Board for 30 years. He has facilitated as both president or even vice president. Owen is an invaluable member who always provides historical perspective, incredible insight and guidance to our district. He provides guidance and professional support to me as well. So I am honored to introduce Dr. Owen Goodfriend. How exciting. Thank you, Emily. How exciting to be celebrating this anniversary of such an awesome institution. Um, so my role today briefly is to provide some of that historical perspective. That was a great uh, video outtake of Bob Stone and his initial vision. I remember really clearly uh, because even before I joined this board uh, 30 years ago, my mother had been on the board and was the, one of the original members of the school board when it was created. And I remember it seemed like such an essential core idea, one of those duh moments. Kids that need to be in the hospital for months or sometimes years at a time still need to go to school. And being a kid involves going to school. So this combination, this teamwork that Scott presented was all about letting kids be kids, even though they're in these really challenging medical circumstances. And I've had the privilege of watching that over decades. And I wanna mention some of the key people involved in building what is now this awesome partnership that accomplishes this so well. Um, and first I have to start with two people. One is uh, Corinne Bloomer as superintendent and Louise Grayer as board chair because getting this whole thing started was a little bit rocky because there's no model for it. It's a unique partnership, a unique educational setting. And it took a few years to build uh, just a stable institution. And Corinne came in as a superintendent and provided that stability of leadership. Uh, and Louise on the board provided the kind of support and advice that Corinne needed. And in fact, the building that we're in now was uh, really created under the guidance and supervision of Corinne Bloomer. She ended up being, uh, in effect, a, uh, a facilities manager in addition to an educational superintendent. And we end up with this state-of-the-art educational facility. Uh, after that pair, the next uh, pair of leaders that I wanna call attention to is 
Corinne's successor as superintendent was, uh, was Ellen Bergman. And Ellen basically said something that again, in retrospect looks obvious, we should not be settling for just making sure that Blythedale patients have basic skills and don't fall behind at their home school. We can do all kinds of awesome things for them that enable them to achieve their full potential. And we should not uh, set our sights low. And the idea of high educational standards, the highest possible educational standards for these kids so that they can achieve awesome things in school while they're overcoming their medical challenges. That's something that Ellen brought to us and her high standards really drove the institution forward. And partnering with her as a board chair was a combination of Peter Rittmaster and Pat Stanley. And both of them were involved with the board for a long time and worked closely with Ellen to create this environment. Um, and then uh, the next step there is, of course, Emily, who is not going to uh, be boastful here, but Emily has been present for so many of these stages because she started literally from the bottom. She started as a teaching assistant and worked her way up through the whole institution. And I can't imagine what this school would be right now if it wasn't in the hands of somebody who knew what it's like to be in the front line with students, what it's like to be uh, a senior teacher, what it's like to be an administrator, and then navigating the uh, regulatory administrative world of special ed schools. So we've really been blessed with this series of awesome leadership, both on the academic side and the board side. And I've been able to see that. And the overall journey, the overall result of that has been that Blythedale started out by saying these kids need school. And then it's like, well, these kids are entitled to an even better school. And now we're at the point where just like the hospital is, the, the Mount Pleasant Blythedale School is an innovator and on the leading edge of doing all the best things that ought to be done and need to be done for kids that are in these special circumstances. It's a combination of the state-of-the-art medical care and the state-of-the-art special education services. And that's where we've gotten to now. And I think it's exciting to celebrate 50 years and I can't wait to see where we're going with the next 50 years. Thank you, Owen. Always an incredible supporter and leader. Thank you so much. Larry Levine, our esteemed CEO and president of Blythdale Children's Hospital has fearlessly led the Blythdale community for the past 20 years. Larry is an incredible partner, one who provides guidance, reassurance, camaraderie, and resources to our program. I am grateful for our collaboration and I'm looking forward to continuing to educate children while their bodies heal together. I am honored to introduce Larry Levine. Thank you so much, Emily, for your kind words and your introduction. Uh, indeed, the hospital school partnership has been critical to helping our young patients reach their health and educational goals. I guess the best example of that partnership came during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. The school and the hospital work so beautifully together to reopen the school back in July of last year, uh, one of the first actually in the state of New York. And we work so well to keep the kids safe get them learning and get their medical care and their therapy. And it's just a tribute to you, Emily, and your team, and to the hospital clinical operations team for this tremendous accomplishment. And now I'm very honored to make a very special presentation this afternoon. My predecessor, Bob Stone, was CEO at Blightdell from 1961 to 2001. Bob was a visionary. Bob was a humanitarian, and Bob retired after 40 years at the helm, the longest tenure of any hospital CEO in the United States. Last year, we received the sad news that Bob had passed away at age 91. 
He took Blythdale from being a con pediatric convalescent home some 60 years ago to a completely licensed children's hospital in 1964. Bob's worldview of children's healthcare was to look at the whole child and that while a child's medical needs must first be addressed, the child's treatment plan had to include physical occupational speech therapy, schooling, and therapeutic development services so that we pay special attention to making sure that each kid can reach the full, their full developmental uh, potential and their milestones. Integrating medicine, developmental pediatrics, and education in a hospital was the genius of Bob Stone. And how is that pathbreaking vision achieved by Bob? Through tirelessly working with the state education department and the Department of Health and the legislature to establish a Blythdale school and a day hospital working together to improve a child's health, their functional independence, while never missing a beat by having the child going to school. Blythdale created this unique utopia for medically complex kids, which still exists today and is the only one of its type in the entire United States. And now it's my distinct privilege to announce that we are naming our day hospital, the Robert Stone Day Hospital in honor of Bob's transformative vision. All who walk through these doors will know and be reminded of his enduring legacy, of this extraordinary man who paved the way for countless children to achieve their dreams that previously seemed unreachable. In addition to the signage that bears his name, there is now a plaque near our main entrance that tells all who enter the, 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 the main hospital of the man who dared to dream big for medically fragile children. We owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to Bob and are proud to be able to acknowledge his transformative contributions to improve the lives of thousands of children with serious medical and physical challenges in this meaningful way and on this historic day. And now I'd like to introduce a very special guest joining us this afternoon. Leslie Stone, Bob's daughter, would like to say a few words. Leslie? Hi, Can, am I I'm muted now? Larry, thank you so much for those wonderful words. Um, unlike my father who thrived on public speaking, I have to read from notes in order to be able to speak in full sentences. Apple clearly fell far from the tree on that one. I grew up on the grounds of Blythdale. The colonial house that you see on the property of Blythdale is the house where my family lived. The analogy would be when a family lives in an apartment above the family store, except that the family business here was a children's hospital. So when my father came up with the idea of creating a school district that would encompass the Blythdale property, it was hailed as an innovative opportunity to educate children who are both inpatients with significant length of stays as well as outpatients. There was one small problem. My brother and I were living on the grounds of the hospital, meaning we lived in the Mount Pleasant Blythdale district, but we were not eligible to attend Mount Pleasant Blythdale. I don't recall the details, but my father had to make additional arrangements so that we could continue to attend the schools where we were already enrolled. Dad loved Blythdale. It was part of who he was. There are other children's hospitals, but there is only one Blythdale. Dad liked to quote Jonas Salk, who was attributed with saying, good parents give their children roots and wings, roots to know where home is, wings to fly away and exercise what's been taught them. Similarly, institutions can have roots as the organization grows and develops. They can also have wings as their new stewards take the helm and steer the institution into new and exciting directions. I like to think that dad nurtured Blythdale over 40 years 
giving it roots as it developed into a mature children's hospital, complete with an on-site school. And Larry Levine and the rest of the Blythdale staff have done a wonderful job of steering Blythdale into the 21st century, even if it will always be home for me. This is an amazing honor for my father, and I thank you so very much. And this ensures that Blythdale will always be a home for him as well. Thank you again. Thanks, thanks so much, Leslie. Your, your dad was a mentor to me, a friend and a wonderful colleague. And um, I hope with this plaque and the naming, his legacy will be etched in the history of this hospital. Thank, thank you, Leslie, be well. And now folks, we have several legislators uh, who would like to talk and celebrate along with us today. Um, and I have to say that our legislators are extremely important to Blightdale. Blightdale, while we provide great educational and healthcare services, cannot do this alone. Public policy advocacy and good legislation and good regulation are the foundation upon which makes Blightdale very great. And I'm so proud of our New York State delegation. They've been with Blightdale every step of the way. Leslie, they were there with your dad at the very beginning, and they're there with me now. And God willing, they'll be with Blightdale for many, many years to come. So I'm so pleased to have seven or eight legislators that want to speak today on behalf of the great work that Blightdale is doing. Uh, these folks uh, also protect the Medicaid budget, which is so important to Blightdale and to the families and the children that we serve. So first up, uh, I'd like to introduce Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, who is the majority leader in the Senate and a tremendous friend to Blightdale. Hi, this is State Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, here to wish the Mount Pleasant Blightdale Union Free School District community well wishes and a heartfelt congratulations in honor of the district's 50th anniversary. I want to thank Superintendent Dr. Emily Hirsch for inviting me to speak with you all today. For half a century, the Mount Pleasant Blightville Union Free School District has done the good work of serving the highly specialized needs of the patients of Blightville Children's Hospital, providing students with the opportunity to learn as they heal. As the only school of its kind in the state of New York, Blightville gives children a sense of normalcy and routine while ensuring they don't fall behind in their education. Since its charter in 1971, the Blightville Union Preschool District has worked with thousands of children, averaging about 120 students each year. I want to give a special thanks again to Dr. Hirsch and Principal Griselda Rodriguez Reyes for their leadership and to the faculty for providing an exceptional school experience to some of our most vulnerable children. Congratulations, and here's the 50 years more of great success. Well, that was great. Thank you very much, um, Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you very much, Senator Stewart Cousins. And now next up, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Senator Shelley Mayer. Senator Mayer is the chair of the Senate Education Committee and is the deputy majority leader in the Senate and a true friend to Blightville Children's Hospital. Senator Mayer. Thank you, Larry. And it's truly a pleasure to be here. Um, one, uh, Leslie, I just want to acknowledge how as a community, we're so appreciative of your father's leadership um, even before I was in the Senate, and Larry knows this, I, I worked for a firm that was fighting for Blythdale. And Blythdale was always top of mind because it's so extraordinary as both as a hospital and a school in, in the approach it has to these challenging children. One thing that I value so greatly is the real commitment to engage the family so fully. And one of the first things I did was speak at the school with because parents asked me to speak. And then the last time I came to visit the hospital, it was in one of the new programs right before COVID. 
where the families were learning the techniques for bringing their children home. And this real commitment to top-notch, absolutely stellar medical care, engaged families, Dr. Hirsch, the leadership in the school and the integration with the medical care and the commitment to family is it, it's really an extraordinary thing. And for the parents of these children who face such a challenging time ahead that weighs so heavily on them, you are a ray of hope and a ray of sunshine in their lives and for their children. And for that, as a chair of education and knowing you give a quality, a uh, high quality, age appropriate and health appropriate education to these children together with extraordinary healthcare coverage on behalf of these families. I don't think we can thank you enough for the ray of sunshine you provide and hope at, at a very challenging time. Uh, I know there are some adults here who were part of Blythdale growing up and they too have an incredible debt of gratitude to what Blythdale has provided and continues to provide. So it's an honor to be fighting for the children, the families and the institutions of the hospital and the school. Thank you to you, the board, the staff and to everyone who makes this extraordinary thing happen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much, Senator Mayor, for those kind words. Next up, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Assemblyman Michael Benedetto. Assemblyman Benedetto is chair of the Assembly Education Committee and uh, is a member of the very important uh, Assembly Ways and Means Committee, where we've worked with uh, Assemblymen over very important pieces of legislation. Assemblyman Benedetto. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, I'm, I'm the chairman of the Education Committee of the Assembly. That's why you invited me, but that's not why I'm here. I was a school teacher and I taught in the New York City public schools. Um, and I taught um, children who were both um, mentally and physically um, challenged. And I remember back in the late 1970s, several times um, during the course of, of my um, years teaching there, um, that my students, um, were going to leave me for a while because they were going to the hospital for operations, okay? And they were going to Blythdale. And I remember distinctively when they came back. I remember being very sad losing them. When they came back, they were well again. Um, they were doing much better physically. But most importantly, and, and maybe a little bit to my chagrin as their teacher, they were educationally doing so much better. And so while in the future, um, I was told um, your students are gonna go to Blythdale for the next um, few months, I was sad to lose them, but I was never disappointed as to where they were going because I knew they were in wonderful hands and they would come back to me better and, 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 and doing so much more um, educationally. Um, it was a long time ago when you were showing those photos, those vintage photos of the students, I was looking to see if some of them um, were kids that I taught. Um, I can never fully thank you for the feeling of joy I felt when those kids came back, when they were doing so much better in school and how physically they were doing so much better. Um, you have had a, 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 uh, a great cause and you have fulfilled um, that mission so admirably. Um, I will continue to be 
a cheerleader for um, Blythdale uh, in the years to come. And um, you have at least one supporter in the state assembly to push your agenda ahead because I know it's the children's agenda as well. Congratulations on 50 great years and may you be around a whole lot longer, both for the parents and for the children. Thank you. Assemblyman Benedetto, thanks so much for those great and inspiring words. And um, we hope to see you up in Albany uh, very time soon as we have legislation, as you know, uh, that's live for the next session and uh, we'll be talking. Thank you so much. Next up is, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Senator Peter Harkham. Senator Harkham represents the district in which Blightdale resides. Senator Harkham is an amazing friend to children's health and a real advocate for children's mental health. And so I'm so honored to have Senator Harkham be able to be live with us. Senator Harkham. Thank you very much, Larry and Emily. I'm, I'm just so humbled to be here. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that Blightdale is, is in the 40th Senate District. Um, we do God's work, both the hospital and the school district. Uh, it's, it's so moving what you do. Your, your students are so inspiring. The last time I was there, I was just overjoyed meeting a number of your students. And, you know, you talk about world-class education, world-class healthcare. One of the things that really struck me uh, the last time I was there was your innovation of world-class technology, both on the educational side and on the therapeutic side that if the products don't exist that your students and children need, you invent them. You know, we had a lengthy discussion about that. I know Larry and I did. Um, and, and it's just remarkable, <coughs> excuse me, how adaptive you are. It's incredible. And I should thank both, both Emily and Larry for your advocacy, because anytime Shelly and I are at a meeting with superintendents, Emily is there. Anytime healthcare bills, are on the agenda, Larry is on the phone, he's there. So you have tremendous, tremendous advocates. So on behalf of the people of the 40th district, I, I just wanna thank all of you on the hospital side, the school district side, um, you're really doing God's work, you're doing amazing work and we're here to support you in any way you need. Congratulations on 50 amazing years and we'll all be back here in another 50. <laughs> Thank you so much for those nice words, Senator Harkham. Next up is uh, Assemblyman Tom Abenante. Uh, Senator, uh, Assemblyman Abenante represents the district uh, where we reside. And uh, Assemblyman Abenante is a real advocate and fighter for children's health and disability rights. And so I'm so pleased and honored that Assemblyman Abenanti will be able to speak to us this afternoon. Are you there? Tom? Okay. So, <laughs> so we can go to his video. Okay. Right? Senator Harkham just sent us all a thank you. Hi, I'm Assemblyman Tom Abenanti. I'm so pleased to join all of you. Well, uh, I am not Assemblyman Abenante, uh, but I, I know, uh, Tom, there you are. Uh, yes, I did send you a video because I'm um, in my car and I thought that would be a better way to approach it all. Um, I will just, let me just add to what, uh, what, we, what I said in the video was, thank you all for uh, all of your efforts. Um, I have worked with you for many, many years uh, as a county legislator and, and as an assemblyman I've been there many times. I brought the Speaker of the Assembly over and he was amazed at what you're doing there. He shares my, uh, my uh, sincere thank you. 
uh, for everything that you do. You know, somebody once said, um, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. That statement applies so well to you and all of the people who provide an education to those who are so seriously challenged. Thank you for 50 years. Keep up the great work. Assemblyman, thank you so much for those words. And I, we all know you're a major fighter uh, for the kids that are here at Blightdale. And I, I hope when you came on, you, you weren't driving. Um, okay, uh, next up is Assemblywoman Amy Pollan. Amy, for years has been a major advocate for children's education and healthcare and has been a partner and a sponsor of a lot of our legislation. And now let's hear from um, Assemblywoman Pollan. Hello, I'm Assemblymember Amy Pollan, and I am so happy to be part of your virtual celebration honoring the 50th anniversary of the Blythedale School. Thank you for educating the children of Blythedale Children's Hospital while their bodies heal. Providing for children who require complex medical care requires both expertise and compassion. Those qualities are the hallmark of the partnership between the doctors, nurses, and therapists who care for the physical needs of the Blythedale children, together with your staff who provide for their educational needs until they can go home. It is so important to give children who learn in the hospital a sense of normalcy. It's equally important to give children educational services in a way that they can accept due to their physical limitations. You do both of these things beautifully and thoughtfully. These services, which you now have been providing to Blythedale's patients for over 50 years are invaluable. On behalf of the New York State Assembly, congratulations on your 50th anniversary. Great. Well, thank you so much, Assemblywoman Pollan. Uh, we have two more uh, guest speakers um, in the legislature. One is uh, Assemblywoman Sandy Galef. Uh, Assemblywoman Galef has been an integral member of the Westchester delegation, and uh, she has been there at every step of the way, supporting important educational initiatives and healthcare legislation uh, that affect the children here at Blightdale. Assemblywoman Gallif. Hi, I'm Sandy Galef, Assemblywoman, and I just want to offer my congratulations to 50 years of wonderful services um, within our community. And I think about the, all the doors that have opened to those children that have come to be with you over the 50 years. Uh, providing wonderful health care, uh, providing socialization and education. I'm just such a fan of Blythedale and may you have many, many more happy years. I had an opportunity a couple of summers ago to bring my summer interns to tour Blythedale and they were just as impressed as I was. So um, I'm really a fan and uh, there's nobody like you. I hope you continue for another 50 years. You may have a wonderful celebration. Enjoy. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. And, uh, and now uh, our last legislator to speak is actually uh, George Latimer, who's the County Executive in Westchester. And we've known uh, George for many, many years, particularly for as many years served in the New York State Senate. Uh, and now let's just go to that video. Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and I'm proud to be here to celebrate a tremendous milestone, a 50-year milestone, a feat in itself for the Mount Pleasant Blythedale School District. It's celebrating a golden anniversary this year, and we're thanking everyone for their commitment and their dedication. Created in 1971, these students are overcoming obstacles every day, receiving intensive rehabilitative care while undergoing a multidisciplinary integrated education. I wanna commend 
every single one of the teachers, healthcare workers, volunteers, families who put these patients as a priority every day. After extensive and intensive medical and educational rehabilitation, students transition to their home communities and their home school districts. These children are not limited. They are limitless to the possibilities that they can achieve. Congratulations to the Mount Pleasant Blythdale School District on this 50th anniversary. May you all continue to inspire and educate. I have to unmute technology, unmute myself. Thank you to George Latimer and to all of those who have participated and shared their stories and their connections with Blythdale, Blythdale Children's Hospital and Mount Pleasant Blythdale School. I'd also like to honor and recognize those who provided proclamations and you can see them behind me, they're right here on my desk. The entire delegation of assembly gave us a proclamation in honor of the Mount Pleasant Blythdale Union Free School District's 50th anniversary and a special shout out to Assemblyman Tom Abenanti, who specifically represents Blythdale and is the committee chair for people with disabilities, along with all other delegates, including Sandy Galef, Amy Paulin, Chris Burdick, Steve Otis, Gary Pretlow, and Nader Sage who also represent children enrolled in our programs. I would also like to acknowledge State Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, the only female majority leader who proclaims this day, Friday, September 24th, 2021 as Mount Pleasant Blythdale Union Free School District Day with appreciation for this special proclamation and to Senator Harkham for proclaiming that he commemorates the 50th anniversary of the Mount Pleasant Blythdale School District. So just before I introduce our next guest, I, I want who is truly an advocate for children, I would like to acknowledge and recognize our students, along with our art teacher, Sharon, for designing the historical timeline that will be displayed in our entrance to highlight and commemorate special events, moments, and most importantly, the partnership between the school and hospital. Truly an incredible art effect with appreciation for your skill set, creativity, and commitment to commemorate this event. So now I'm honored to introduce Regent Fran Wills, a retired school superintendent who has led the Briarcliff Manor and Putnam Valley School Districts prior to being chosen and appointed by the state legislator to represent the ninth judicial district on the state board of regents. Dr. Wills has been a professional colleague and significant supporter of students with special needs, especially for children attending our school. I am honored to welcome Regent Wills. Thank you so much, uh, Emily. But, you know, I was so moved, first of all, by hearing from the alumni from your mm. school at the beginning of this presentation. I'm actually honored to be here with you all today. And I want to congratulate the family of Bob Stone on this wonderful way of recognizing what he has accomplished. And also all those who have led the school and served the school in all capacities. Uh, I must most recently, um, I have been a colleague of Dr. Bergman and now Dr. Hirsch who have devoted themselves to these children uh, who, are, who are at the school, and of course the Board of Education as well. In these daunting times for everyone, we crave opportunities like this to celebrate humanity and goodness. The generous spirit that created this place of caring and compassion for all children, offering the gift of teaching and learning and camaraderie that all children deserve to experience reminds the students, teachers, parents, caregivers, and our communities that the thirst to think, to dream, and to imagine is universal and empowers those who suffer not just physical pain, but emotional isolation that accompanies pain. 
Blythe Jail for 50 years has brought the world to children and offers hope and promise of engagement in friendship and connection with peers and the joy of interaction that all children seek. At Blythedale, students have access to the normal rhythms of life, helping to heal body, mind, and spirit. We express our gratitude today to the founders who had the vision for this remarkable home and school and those who continue to support its flourishing affirmation of youth, allowing all to dwell in possibility. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Grateful to you and to your leadership, Regent Wills, always a supporter for the Blythedale School, but for all our schools in our area. And we truly, every superintendent, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us, truly appreciate you and your leadership. So the saying, save the best for last, captures Scott Barber, alumnus of the Mount Pleasant Blythedale School District. He attended Blythedale in 1989, graduated from Mount Pleasant Blythedale and Tarrytown High Schools in 1993. He earned a master's in social work and is now the CEO and president of SBW Empowerment LLC, an experienced advocate who empowers people with disabilities. I am honored and proud to introduce you to Scott Barber. Hello. Thanks, Emily, for that introduction. It was so sweet. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Barbara Weiser, and um, I was born with a disability. And unfortunately, in high school, I had medical issues that really impeded me going to school. And um, if it wasn't for Blythedale, um, Union Free School District, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, they're the great teachers that I had, Miss Magro for Science and Miss Moyle and Miss um, Coakley. They just, everybody worked with me around my disabilities. I was on this, um, they called it a Blythe Mobile, which was like, I could take my classes while I was on a stretcher and push myself and it really was an exceptional experience that I had to deal with. And um, because of all that, I'm able to do what I love. I've got my master's in social work. I've been advocating for people, I can't believe since 1993. <laughs> and um, it's, like I said, it's only because of the people at Blythedale that I was able to start this. It was um, Carol Squires, who was the um, principal at the time, who really helped me to get my start because my school, unfortunately, since I wasn't there a lot because of my various issues, um, were putting me on a track for an IEP diploma. And Carol Squires let them know that I was doing sufficient work in high school at Blythedale, and I was able to graduate with my local diploma. And that let me get into the colleges I needed to get into, and um, all the things that I needed to do to get to where I am today. And um, it's been an amazing life. I, uh, I remember we'd come down from the blue unit and wheel ourselves into the classroom. Everything was in open format. And um, we'd be able to take our classes and do everything that we needed to. Um, uh, 
Um, so yeah, it was just, I cannot tell you or express enough how much Blythdale really impacted my life. Obviously I was able to get better, <laughs> get out of the hospital. Back then I was like, oh, who's gonna hire someone with a disability? And today I get to do the hiring. So um, life is good. Um, and I just, I got to say thank you for all the things that I've been able to receive. I, I worked for an independent living center for 15 years where I got to work with Shelly Mayer and with the, um, Andrea Stewart Cousins and our great, um, oh, um, county executive right now on different advocacy things. And um, so it's amazing how our lives come full circle. So um, yeah, thank you, Blythdale. And happy 50th. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott for sharing your story. And thank you all for joining me on a brief walk down memory lane, honoring those who have made an impact and celebrating the journey of our students. And as we close, consider how you can support our efforts to ensure access and opportunity to children and families who never planned their life altering event. We can all relate as this past 18 months, the entire world has experienced a life altering event that we didn't plan. However, with proper resources, medical care, and attention, we're winning. Please help me support my kids and win. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.